Hello and thanks for joining me again. Today we're going to look at moving divs around on a page using CSS and also we're going to nest divs inside of divs and we're going to move those child divs around inside of their parent containers. So I have two files here and let's add in some code. All right, so we'll add a div to our page here. All right, and we'll give this div an ID of parent. We're going to add some, we're going to nest some divs inside of it, but for now, we'll go ahead and make this div visible on the screen using CSS. So if we open with live server, we see nothing because we haven't done anything yet. So we go into our style sheet create a selector for our parent div. And we'll give it a width of 320 pixels, a height of half that. And we'll give it a background color of black. Okay, so we see our div on the screen here. Right, and let's say we want to move that div over to the center of the screen. All right, we can do that easily enough. All right, we can say margin left auto, margin right auto, and that moves it over. And if we'd like to move it down from the top, say 150 pixels, we can do that too. Okay, so now we have the div somewhere toward the center of the screen. And now let's say we would like to add some child divs, put them inside there and move them around uh, inside of their parent container. All right, so we'll add a div here. And we're going to give each of these children, these child divs, the class of children. And in Visual Studio Code, because it has Emmet built in, we can just say dot because we're making a class selector here, children. And if we hit enter, it gives us a div with a class of children. And then if I shift control D three times, I have four child divs. But I do want to give them individual unique IDs. So we'll call this one child one. and then child two, three, and four. Okay, so let's create, or let's try to visualize the child one element by using CSS. So again, we'll use the unique ID selector. And we'll give it a width of 80 pixels. So one quarter of the width of its parent. And we'll give it a height the same because we want it to be square and we'll give it a background color of orange and there it is and it's in the top left corner now say I wanted to move that div around a little bit inside of that parent container remember this black this div with the black background this is the parent container and this one with the orange background this is the child div so say I wanted to move it down from the top 80 pixels a length uh, equal to its height. I could say top 80 pixels and nothing happens. Say I try to move it to the left or move it to the right from the left. I can say offset it from the left also by 80 pixels and nothing happens. And the reason why it's not moving is because if you want to use top and left to move your divs around or your elements around you need to define a position. So we can give it a position of relative. 
And now when we do that, we see that it's not only moved down 80 pixels from the top, it's moved over 80 pixels from the left. All right, and this relative means relative to its parent container. So 80 pixels from the left means 80 pixels from this left side of the parent container, all the way to the left side of the child div, not to the center. All right, and this 80 pixels from the top means 80 pixels from the top of the parent container to the top of the child div. Again, not the center. And if we want to move it over a little more, we could say 120, not, not 1200. And right, if we want to move it over a little bit more, we can say 200, not 2000. All right. And if we wanted to make it fit right up against the edge, we can make it 240. Right, 240 pixels means from the left edge of the parent container to the left edge of the child div, which is here. If we add on the other 80 pixels, we get to the right edge of the parent container, and that would give us 320 pixels. So that seems to make sense. All right, but let's put things back to where they were. The top left corner was where it originally was. Okay, and then let's put in another div, another child div. All right, we'll call this one, or we already did call it child two. We don't want it to be orange. Let's make it red. Okay, now something interesting is happening here. Here we have the top and left settings at zero pixels, so that we see that at the as being at the top left corner. But we have the same settings here for this second child. All right, so it's not overlapping its brother or sister here. It's actually below. And that's because divs are default block level elements and they'll stack on top of each other. So this top for child two, this zero pixels, the zero point is the bottom edge of its sibling right here. All right, if we wanna move it over to the right and have its left side of zero be at the right edge of its sibling, we could create a class selector for children. That was the class we gave to all of the child divs. And we can say display inline block. And that moves the, or that puts the sibling divs side by side. Unfortunately, when we do that, we get this weird little space in between. All right, there's some sort of default padding setting in there. But we can easily get rid of that by going into the parent div and setting the font size to zero. And when we do that, we get rid of that annoying space. Okay, so again, we set the position of these child divs relative to the parent container. If we didn't do that, say if we set it to absolute, all right, then that would move it out of the parent container and it would position it relative to the screen. All right, so it would put it in the top left corner of the viewport. Zero pixels from the left, zero pixels down from the top left. But again, we want to keep it inside of our parent container, so we use position relative. Okay, and let's create our third child. And we'll make it color blue. And it is where you expect it. Again, they're all zero from the top edge of the container because we set them to be side by side. But child three's left edge, even though it says zero here, it's zero pixels with respect to the right edge of its sibling here. Okay, and we can do one more child div. Okay, and we can set this color to green. And there it is. And again, its left side is zero pixels at the far right side of its sibling. And if we want to create an interesting checkerboard pattern, we could do that. We could move, say, the second div here, 
child two downward so it fits in right here. All we need to do is make it 80 from the top and that works. And we can do the same thing for child number four. Okay, now we have an interesting checkerboard pattern. Now, what would happen at this point if I took away this position property from, say, child, not from child one, we'll do a child two here. It jumped back up to the top. All right, and the reason is, is because these top and left um, positioning uh, properties, they don't work unless you have the position set. So remember that. That may be one of the more important points we've covered in this tutorial. So I hope this uh, gave you a little bit of clarity on how to move divs around on a, a web page and how to move divs around inside of container divs. And like I said, if you don't add the position property to these child divs, you're not going to be able to use top, left, right, and bottom to move them around. So anyway, thank you for joining me. And as always, um, I appreciate your, your, your support, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.